Hi, I'm Rebecca Balcarcel. Let's take a look at Oranges, the poem by Gary Soto. It's a lovely moment between two young people, kind of a love poem. Um, you'll find it charming, I think. So I'll read it through the first time, and it tells a little story. The first time I walked with a girl, I was 12, cold and weighted down with two oranges in my jacket. December, frost cracking beneath my steps, my breath before me, then gone. As I walked toward her house, the one whose porch light burned yellow night and day in any weather, a dog barked at me until she came out, pulling at her gloves, face bright with rouge. I smiled, touched her shoulder, and led her down the street, across a used car lot and a line of newly planted trees, until we were breathing before a drugstore. We entered, the tiny bell bringing a sales lady down a narrow aisle of goods. I turned to the candies, teared like bleachers, and asked what she wanted. Light in her eyes, a smile starting at the corners of her mouth. I fingered a nickel in my pocket. And when she lifted a chocolate that cost a dime, I didn't say anything. I took the nickel from my pocket, then an orange, and set them quietly on the counter. When I looked up, the lady's eyes met mine and held them, knowing very well what it was all about. Outside, a few cars hissing past, fog hanging like old coats between the trees. I took my girl's hand in mine for two blocks, then released it to let her unwrap the chocolate. I peeled my orange that was so bright against the gray of December that for some distance someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. That from some distance someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. So this is, like I said, charming to me. Um, let's look at it more closely. I'm noticing, for example, the contrast between the white frost and the fog, uh, gray and the gray December, and also the gray of his breath when he says it's in the air and gone. You know, his um, the condensed breath is making a little cloud. I'm noticing the contrast between that and then the porch light. It says her house was the one where the porch light burned yellow night and day. So we have December and then we have the yellow of the porch light. And then the girl comes out, her face bright with rouge. So the other bright thing is the girl. And of course, the other, other bright thing are the oranges. And right now they're in the jacket. So um, they have not been pulled out yet. But when we get there, the oranges, too, make a contrast in this kind of gray and white background. So um, the speaker's 12. Um, he collects his girl here. Um, she comes out pulling on her gloves, winter gloves, and um, they go to the drugstore. Now, a drugstore in this time period, and it's not too far back, but um, a, a little ways back, so that you might not realize that a drugstore like... Um, sort of like CVS or Walgreens, it would have had not only pharmaceuticals, um, you know, Tylenol and the Advil, but also candy and also like school supplies and just kind of like a small grocery store, almost neighborhood store. So they, they come to the drugstore and it says until we were breathing before the drugstore. And I'm imagining that maybe there's fog on the window as they look inside the drugstore too. So they go in and there's a little bell that rings. It rings the sales lady. And I can just hear that, that little bell that happens when you come into a little store. Um, and then the candies, they look at the, the like stack of candies, but it's tiered like bleachers. And of course, bleachers are what you sit on at like sporting events, basketball games or something, um, long rows that are laddered up, you know, um, and you can imagine the candy in that same configuration. I think it's a clever comparison. Um, so those tiered candies, and then um, the girl asks for, well, he says, what would you like? And her eyes light up. So again, light 
is coming from the girl. It, before it was her face, now it's her eyes. So everything associated with her is the light and the bright. So um, she picks up a chocolate that costs more than he has, right? We know he has a nickel, um, the chocolate costs a dime. And so he pays with the nickel, five cents, and the orange, which better be worth at least five cents. Um, and the sales lady has to be a little bit generous here and accept this as payment. She decides to help him, right? They share this moment, that, and there's some tension. There's some suspense. Um, when It says, when I looked up, the lady's eyes met mine and held them, knowing very well what it was all about. So the sales lady sees the boy and the girl, understands that he's buying the girl the chocolate. She gets it. It's, all, it's practically a date, you know, and she's going to help out. Um, and oranges are very valuable. Um, in fact, an orange in December, if we weren't so used to food coming to our grocery stores all year round, all kinds of foods, um, it might be more clear to us how rare it would be, in the Northern Hemisphere especially, to have an orange in December and how expensive it would be. As I say now, we have a lot of luxury with food transport, so oranges are brought to my store fairly cheaply all year long. But an orange in December is special. So um, the sales lady agrees to this, right? She, she just does the <laughs> transaction. And then they're outside um, with success. So uh, the suspense is over. And, but the loveliness is not over because, of course, now they get to enjoy the chocolate and the orange. Um, so they hold hands for two blocks and then the girl unwraps her chocolate he says, I peeled my orange that was so bright. And here's another bright moment contrasting with the gray December. Um, he says, so bright against the gray December that from some distance, someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. Wow, what an image. So it seems somewhat realistic that, that from a distance, someone might see this bright orange in his hands and think, wow, that looks like fire course we would know that that's a kind of surreal image and not possible but it's a great thing to picture in your head like ooh, it looks like fire and what does he have in his hands and why the word fire fire is associated with passion with love with romance if you're on fire for someone yes and he has the fire right there in his hands and not only his feelings toward the girl but look how well this has gone <laughs> the girl so far is pleased with him um, he's in her favor he's got love in his hands right now and it's a poignant moment it's a precious moment and the life of the orange the colorfulness the brightness of the orange is is kind of like the the hope that comes when you see two young people uh, starting a relationship like this, and even though they're so young, they're really children, it's, it's just super sweet because you think this is, this is how life goes on, right? L literally, this is how the human race goes on. And this, the sweetness and the connection between them, it is like fire in his hands. It's precious, and it's, it's a little bit dangerous, and... It's life-giving, you know, it's warmth. Ah, so I enjoy this poem so much, and I hope you did too. Please join me for another poem, and sometime soon.